Hey there, welcome to this short demonstration showcasing how Neo4j, the number one graph database, utilizes Fabric One Lake API to seamlessly load data from One Lake directly into Neo4j graph database. Neo4j is a leading graph database platform that enables organizations to model, store, and query complex interconnected data with ease. So Neo4j in collaboration with Fabric extends its capabilities through Fabric's interop model Fabric offers a range of APIs, connectors, and other tools enabling ISVs like Neo4j to seamlessly integrate with the solutions with Fabric's own lake ecosystem. The first step in the process is to obtaining the authorization token. So uh, you use uh, Azure Active Directory to get the token, and then use the token to read the files that I uh, ha already have in my one lake, and then use cipher queries to create the knowledge graphs. The so knowledge graphs are representation of all your entities in your one lake in the form of nodes and relationships. So with that, let me show you the first demo, the interop demo. So I'm gonna start with the one lake and show you guys the data files. So this is the S3 shortcut I created and these are the files in my bucket. And I'm gonna run query to get the, uh, the Azure Active Directory on my command prompt and take that Active Directory token and create nodes from these data files in Neo4j graph database. So I'm going to run a script. These scripts are all in GitHub. I'm going to provide the link at the end of this. So I'm going to run the script. So it's basically, it just got the Active Directory token and printed the Cypher query for me. So the Cypher query is, is the process of creating a knowledge graph from your data. So I'm going to uh, go to your go to my browser, which is the Neo4j's uh, developer focus tool to run queries and see the results visually. So I'm going to run and uh, paste the query that I just got. So this is the uh, this is the token, and these are the files in my one lake, and this is these are the queries or cipher queries to create those entities as nodes and edges. So as you can see, this is a empty database now. I'm going to run this, and as I run, you will see the node labels and relationship types getting created here. Okay, so it created all these entities, it's getting created, and I'm gonna show the data model now. All right, so this is the data model. I just ran this query to do the schema visualization. And it's, as you can see on the screen, we have customers, orders, product, category, suppliers, and all those things. So as you can see how powerful it is. So even without logging into with Fabric UI, I was able to get the data files from one lake and create the knowledge graph in Neo4j browser. Here's the repository. It's uh, github.com slash Neo4j dash partners. And then you'll, you'll find a Fabric repository here with all the code that I just ran. All right, so now we can look at other methods, how we can integrate these two systems, Neo4j and one lake. So what I'm going to show is a notebook-based integration using Synapse Data Engineering module. And we have some GitHub repository code that you can use to load your data from one lake to Neo4j. So I'm going to go back to one lake, Fabric UI. And these are the files that you have that I previously used Cypher queries to load. Now I'm going to show you guys the data engineering module that actually does the exact same thing, but this is much better in terms of performance and also what you can do with your data because the data that you have can be converted to data frames and to load it to Neo4j. So I'm going to run everything and I'm going to do the code walkthrough. So as you can see, this is the S3 shortcut that I created and it's going to create data frames and it's going to read all the headers from your CSV, from the CSV file that we have, and it's gonna create the nodes. As I said, these are all available, available as data frames. So if you do want, if you wanna do some processing, aggregation, filtering, you name it, right? So you can do all of that in your data frames and you can write it to Neo4j. So the same code is available in the same Git, GitHub repository that I previously showed. And this is how we get the data to Neo4j. Now, we have the data in Neo4j. What can we do with that, right? So let's assume there are other systems that are providing data updates as it happens into Neo4j. Now we have a better knowledge graph, 
right? So now we can bring that data back into Fabric platform and you can build some apps on top of that. So for to show you guys an example, I built a small report. I'm gonna show you guys that uh, uh, report as an app. So I'm gonna to go to click browse. This is the app. Okay, so this is uh, done using a Neo4j BA connector. So the BA connector pulls the data directly from Neo4j graph database and creates a semantic model in Fabric. And then we can build some reports like this. So in this report, the interesting part is that there are some top customers listed here in one of the dashboard items. So if I hover over, it actually will point back to the same database and be able to open that specific record within Bloom, which is the business uh, user-friendly UI to explore the graph. So I'm, I clicked on the record and it's gonna specifically look for the record and it's going to show the record here and I'm going to explore the whole graph here. So I'm looking at all the uh, orders that the, the customer ordered. I'm gonna keep drilling into the orders to see all the products. I can keep going and find out all the suppliers for that and the supplier location, location in all those things. So, so you, as you can see, I start from one node and probably uh, brought the whole database the canvas. All right, a few other things we can do is to build a conversational interface for the data that you have using our semantic search. So the advantage is that you get so much richer and more deeper knowledge retrieval using Graph Database. Thank you.